good morning. Good morning, Central family. And good morning, guests, to our Sunday morning online worship, worship service. We're so glad that you joined us. We're so glad to be with you again, family, to worship together and to learn God's word. If it's your first time with us, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Central Baptist Church. I'm the First Lady here, Dorcas Wattis, and my husband, husband is Pastor Gerald Wattis, and we're so glad that you decided to join us. Central, we have a letter uh, for, uh, for an angel tree uh, parent, and it says, Dear Pastor Gerald Wattis, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Nothing made me feel better in the 2020 pandemic than hearing my children smile and laugh for the gifts that you gave them. I'm so thankful and honored that my children were able to have a wonderful Christmas. I want to thank Central Baptist Church for providing my children with a gift on my behalf. Also, your act of love brought joy and hope into my life. I pray that you will continue to keep this connection because it was truly a blessing. Just getting a gift and a letter from you and your church. God bless you all with love, peace, and happiness. And it says, sincerely, La Kendrick. And this is from one of the parents of the children that received the gifts from your Generosity Central. I tell you, the Angel Tree program went on, went off without a hitch, and it was really a blessing to be a blessing to these children whose parents are incarcerated. So God bless you, and I'm sure we'll be receiving more letters from uh, the, the parents of the Angel Tree children. Our 2020 year-end tax statements. Church family, if you would like to have a copy of your year-end tithe and giving statement, please call the church office and leave your full name and mailing address. All statements will be mailed this year. All statements will be mailed. So if you would like to have it mailed, it won't go out automatically. You do need to call the church office and leave your name, address, and a phone number in case there's any questions. And if you're a couple and you want a separate statement, please indicate that at the, at the request. And that's from our church administrator, Michelle Williams. She says, thank you, and may God continue to bless you all. Save the date. The Central Baptist Church Agape Couples Ministry is having a Valentine's Day virtual connection. It's going to be on Febu Saturday, February 6th at 1 p.m. It will be on Zoom and you can contact Minister Ricky and Mrs. Gro Minister and Mrs. Ricky Grover for more information. And it says to join the fun, the games, the marriage memories and contests. So that should be a great time, and you can refer to the flyer for the Zoom ID and password. We have another exciting um, things coming up in February, and that's our Men's Day program. That is going to be on February 14th at three o'clock in the afternoon. So mark your calendars for February 14th and fellowship with the men on uh, on our live channel, it'll be on the, the same, what you're watching right now, it'll be on the same platform at three o'clock. But more information will be coming on that. Once again, if you have a announcement or a prayer request, or if someone passes or needs prayer, please call the church office and leave a message. We've been getting, uh, uh, information that people are, can't get in touch with us, but you have to leave a message. If you leave a message, someone will call you back. So if you call and no one answers, the answering machine will be checked every single day. So if you need anything or need to get in touch with the pastor, please leave a message 
on the church phone. All right, Centro, is there anyone with a birthday today? Do you have a birthday today? Happy birthday! And I want to say happy 85th birthday to Reverend Elijah Starr. His birthday was on the 15th. Happy birthday, Reverend Starr. If it's your anniversary, happy anniversary. And may God bless you with many, many, many more. Central, we thank you for your generosity, for your giving, for your continued support of this ministry. We are still doing great things, even though we're not meeting in the building. We are uh, still ministering to people. We are still giving to people. We still have our food bank going. We still have so much going on at our church. We have Bible studies. We have, oh, that reminds me, next Sunday is Children's Church. Okay, family, listen. If you don't put your children on Children's Church, they won't be on it. So you can set the alarm. They know how to get on Zoom by themselves, but at least just get up, wake them up. We don't care if they come in their pajamas, but we need to see our children in Children's Church. It's just once a month. It's once a month, that's not too often. They go, I know they go to school every single day on Zoom. Please don't neglect their spiritual education also. We make it fun, the children enjoy it, and we wanna see all of our children in Children's Church. Look, Please refer to the church flyer on Children's Church for the Zoom ID and password. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing all the children that I haven't seen in a while. By the time I see them, they won't even recognize them. So put them on Zoom so First Lady can see our children of Central Baptist Church. And it doesn't ha you don't have to be a member. Tell a friend, too. Tell some other children that are want to go to Children's Church. All right, God bless you and God keep you. And like I said, uh, thank you for your giving. There's several ways that you can give. You can uh, text to CBC Carson 77977. You can drop it off, you can mail it to our church, or you can go to our website and give online. But remember, God loves a cheerful giver. So, Central, let's get ready for worship and the word. If you, if you weren't with us last week, go back and listen to our little Malaya, the Hen Henry's granddaughter. She did a wonderful job singing, and if you missed that, make sure you go back on our YouTube, YouTube channel and watch the worship with our 10-year-old Malaya. So God bless you, God keep you. It's time for worship and the word. See you next week if the Lord says the same.
Good morning, everyone. It's so glad you joined us. We're so glad you joined us, rather, in our online worship experience. It is truly a blessing to uh, come before you uh, this time to bring the word of God. And I just want to say to you, just encouraging words, that we're going through this pandemic, but no one thing. God is in control. His hands is in this. And God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So we can have that trust in God, knowing that we're going to get through it. So those of you who are going through uh, the illnesses of the COVID-19, I just want to say that we're praying for you, that God will bring speedy healing upon your body, that he'll bring you through this. And just know this one thing, where either way it goes, God has us in his hands. So with that said, I just want to say to you all, stay safe, stay healthy, stay prayed up and stay in the word as you go through this pandemic. No that we need God at all times. So there we go. Uh, we're going to get into the word of God. But before we do that, we're going to just uh, look at look to the Lord right now in a brief word of prayer. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of thy son, Jesus, we humbly come before your throne of grace. Just thanking you, O God, for the many blessings, for your love, grace and your mercies you have uh, bestowed upon us all. Father, we just thank you for you being God and you being God all alone. So, Father, as I go forward in your word, I ask that you would just use me, O oh God, use me as your vessel that I may bring honor to you by the word spoken today. And I, Father, I just ask that you would help me to decrease as you increase through your Holy Spirit, that I may speak words to your people that will help and help them move forward. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything. We ask it all in Jesus name. And all of you said amen that agree. You have your Bibles, go with me over to uh, Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 3. Matthew's Gospel, excuse me, Matthew's Gospel, verse 1 through 4, rather. Matthew, verses 1 through 4, and the text reads, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he afterward was hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I just want to use... Uh, as a title here in this message, Fighting Temptations, Fighting Temptations. So here in these passages of scripture here, we find Jesus being led up to be tempted prior to this here. If we look at it in this or in the prior chapter, God's voice had just announced that Jesus is his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. We also uh, 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 find God who was already, he already knew what was going to uh, transpire, you know, with Jesus, that is, which was Jesus being taken up to be tempted. And now God uh, already had the result as well of what was going to happen. God already knew the temptation was coming because we're talking about Jesus here. God manifested in the flesh. And so the spirit leads Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And, 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 and now keep in mind, keep in mind here, Jesus had just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And now Jesus is hungry. Jesus was stronger than your normal man. So the devil came to him and said, if you're the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So Jesus' reply was just simply, it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but he lives by every single word that comes from the mouth of God, comes from the mouth of God, the word of God. We have the Bible here today that we can look at that comes from the mouth of God. Now, understand, Jesus went straight to the source of survival, of our survival, rather. And that is the word of God. When we think about it, temptation and its meaning, the meaning of temptation, rather, is defined as an enticement or an invitation to sin. Now, looking at the devil here, 
the devil here was enticing or inviting Jesus to something with the promise to satisfy the flesh. And it was a promise. It was a promise of something that seemed greater by following after the way of disobedience to God. And I believe that in, in us fighting the devil's temptation, it begins by knowing that Satan is the supreme tempter. Now, I want to uh, uh, just basically point out four key ingredients to help you in, in, in fighting your temptations that you go through. Every one of us go through them. But I want to just hit you with four key ingredients that we need in order to fight this, these temptations we have. And the first point is this. Understand our tempter is very crafty. Understand our tempter is very crafty. Looking at Genesis chapter three and verse one, God's word says this. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? It was a question to Eve. So going back to the beginning, God's word here tells us that of all the wild creatures that God created, the serpent here was the craftiest of all of them. And so in Genesis 3, the serpent steps over to Eve and he asks her a slick question saying, is it written that God has forbidden you to eat the fruits of the trees in the garden? And so Eve responded in the next verse properly. But the serpent wouldn't give up. He went on to lie to her in verse four, verses four through six to tempt her into eating from the forbidden tree. So the point is this. Here's the point. Satan has been tempting all mankind since our loving God has placed his first two children in the Garden of Eden. And we must understand that Satan is the most powerful of evil spirits. Satan's power can affect the spiritual world as well as the physical world. Now, when we, we, we read the story of humanity's sin that uh, began back then and, 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 and began with a tree and ended on a tree, meaning first the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and then finally the cross on which Jesus dies. The first tree offers fruit that leads to death, but the second tree offers a death that leads to eternal life and empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit's power to help us overcome the challenges of the enemy. So therefore, we know that Satan's power over Christians, that is us, has been uh, effectively destroyed. Why? It's because the war has already been won through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, which conquered the power of sin and death forever. Just to give you a brief uh, 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 explanation of all that there. Moving on to my second key ingredient to fighting these temptations, and that's this. Be disciplined and stay alert. Be disciplined and stay alert. We read 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. Peter says this. He says, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who, who resist, resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same, that the same afflictions that are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So what is Peter, Peter saying? Peter is simply telling us a very important ingredient to fighting this temptation that we deal with. He says to be disciplined and stay on guard because our adversary, the devil, is on the prowl. Just like a roaring lion looking around, just waiting for the chance to just devour and destroy someone. He's on the prowl waiting for someone, some weak person to go after. 
And then in verse 9, Peter goes on and says, in other words, he says this. Peter says, resist the devil and be strong in your faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are suffering with us in this fight. Listen, folks, hear me on this. It's really awesome how Peter uses the lion as an example to describe how the enemy will attack. Why? Is because they ambush and stalk their prey. And I want to show you something. One day I was watching this video and uh, I, I love this uh, Stacy called Net Geo Wild. And sometimes, you know, it just really just just watching how animals do things in the wild. And one of my favorites watching is the lion and how clever he is. One day this episode was about these the lions in the wild. And, and, and there was this two gazelles with big racks and they were just tussling with each other. And they're out there rack to rack, just battling it out, pushing and shoving at each other. And, and, the, and, and you look at it, the same breed of animals fighting each other. And in the background, you see when you look back, there's a lion and this lion is creeping up in the grass, slowly creeping up on both of them. They're totally unaware as to uh, uh, what was going on. They continue to battle their own kind, each other. And suddenly, one of these two gazelles pay a heavy price with his or her life. He or she gets devoured as lunch. The other one sprints off. The lion just basically has a good lunch. And I truly believe this, you know, that this is a picture that Peter here was drawing us to see and how we could be when we are not disciplined, fighting each other. That's when we are vulnerable to the devil for him to devour us up. We get into church and we start feuding and, and, and we're supposed to be the body and we're fighting our, our own body. That's when the devil creeps up and creeps in and devours folk. And that's when we see what we, what, just what we've seen in this video just, re, just now. And looking for the prey. Gee, the, the enemy is looking for the prey that was not alert, like the lion also looks for weak, easy prey. And so we have to remember, we must remember, seriously remember, Satan is still prowling the earth, looking to simply drive a wedge between God and his children, and his temptations are unfortunately a daily part of our lives. However, however, when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and 13, the Apostle Paul says this, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. You remember how the, the, the uh, lion got one. He couldn't get a boat, but he got one and the other one got away. He had a way of escape, but he still wasn't alert. He was fortunate. The lion had a choice. And the thing that we look at what Paul was simply saying through this passage here is no kind of temptation that we face is nothing new. We do know that God is faithful to the point that he will not let us be tempted beyond what he can handle, what we can handle rather. Paul tells us that God will always provide for us a way of escape so that we will be able to endure and be able to keep pressing towards God's mark. Listen, folks, hear me on this. With the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth of God's word to give us help at the right time we need to, uh, that we need, we will find ourselves able to resist the devil's temptation. Paul is just simply encouraging us here uh, by saying no temptation has gripped you, you enough or accept what is common to man. The temptation is going to come regardless of what's going on. But just be disciplined and stay alert because the devil don't fight fair. He wants to devour anyone he can catch slipping and tripping. See, Jesus was tempted in all areas according to the word of God. And then we find that just like it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, the writer says, For we have not an high priest 
which cannot be touched with the fleeing of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we, we are, yet without sin, yet without sin. So the writer is simply saying that Jesus is not just some high priest who has no sympathy for our weaknesses or flaws, but Jesus has already been tested in every way imaginable. No more and, 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 and even more to this. Jesus has been tested. However, Jesus passed every single test that was thrown at him. Jesus never failed God in any way, shape or form. And that's why it is so very important for us to be disciplined and stay alert. Be on guard, looking around, seeing what's there, watching what the devil's doing. He's crafty. He's clever. So be alert, be disciplined and stay alert. Moving on to my third key ingredient to fighting temptation is this. The word of God is vital in this fight. The word of God is vital in this fight. I want you to notice in, in uh, back to Matthew 4, 4, Jesus, when he replied to the devil here, Jesus said this, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So in other words, man doesn't survive on bread and, uh, bread and food by itself. We don't just eat, sleep and be merry. But our survival is on the word of God that comes straight from the mouth of our living God, our living and loving God, that is. And that God has put on the pages of the Bible. We don't read it. We can't operate this right. You don't buy a, 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 a certain type of device or whatever it is. And you don't read the instructions. You got to read the instruction manual to know exactly how the manufacturers created it to be used. And our survival is on the word that comes from the mouth of God that God has placed in the Bible. Let's make that clear. Listen, folks, the word of God has and will always be the best defense against Satan's temptation. And what's so very important is that the better we know God's word, the easier it will be to overcome and be victorious over all the daily struggles in fighting these temptations. I like how the psalmist put it. The psalmist said this in uh, 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 the 119th Psalm, verse 11. He said this, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Read that again. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So what is the psalmist saying? The psalmist is simply saying that that he is strong, he is storing, excuse me, he is storing God's word deep in his heart as a deterrent to sin and temptations. The psalmist is feasting on God's word he's talking about. So that when the temptations come, he is full of the, of the word of God. So that the word of God can be called to his remembrance at the right time in the right place. And I truly believe that just like the psalmist says here, hiding the word of God in our heart, we should be doing the same identical thing, hiding God's word in our hearts. And I loaded 2 Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15, very familiar verse here. This is Timothy. Paul said to Timothy, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paul tells Timothy, he says, Timothy, my son, listen to me. If you, you got to study God's word, do everything that you can to present yourself to God as a man who is fully genuine. And that you show that you are a worker who is not ashamed of your mission. Paul went on and said, uh, 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 a guide who is, is capable of leading others down the right path and rightly dividing or handling the word of God properly, that God gave you serving, excuse me, serving it rightly and truthfully. He wanted Paul, uh, uh, Timothy, Paul wanted Timothy to be able to rightly divide it and serve it properly and truthfully. 
according to what the word God says, saying what it says and, and meaning what it says. See, listen, folks, folks, we should build our lives on what God's word says. God's word tells us how to live for God, how to serve him as well. By us not studying God's word, it's just like walking in the dark, not being able to see where you're going. That's what it is when you don't don't uh, 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 study God's word, because in uh, uh, Psalms 119, 105, the psalmist says here, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You need light to see where your feet go. You need light to see where you're going, the path that you're taking. God's word helps us to walk safely through this life. We're in the light of God when we're in the word of God. And this life is full of evil traps that the devil will set right there at your feet and you'll accidentally step in it. See, God's people, especially to keep them from tripping in the dark. What God's word does uh, for us is God's word reveals to us false philosophies as well as true eternal kingdom values. Those are the things God's word does for us. It opens us up to see in the dark. We read about when, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert, the first thing Jesus uh, did was he quoted scripture. Three times when the devil tried to tempt him, he would quote scripture until the devil finally got it and eventually left him. Psalm 119, 97 and 98, the psalmist says this as well. He says this, oh, how I love thy, thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Though through thy commandments has, has made me wiser than mine enemies, for thy are ever with me. Excuse me, for they are ever with me. So the psalmist says that, he loves the law of God, which is the word of God. He says that he meditates on it all day long. And he says God's ways make him wiser than his enemies. And he finishes it with this. And they are always with me. We study God's word. We, we, we meditate them on all day. We keep them in our heart. We hide them in everything. Guess what? They are with us always. Folks, hear me. I believe that we need to be diligent in studying God's word with technology like it is today. There really is no excuse because while we are checking our emails, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Amazon, iTunes, App Store, FaceTime, Apple Store, eBay, Netflix and everything else. All those apps on the phone, we're checking those and we got a Bible app over here in the corner. We never touch it. We never go in there and read it. We never check that out. We say, well, I can't read the word of God. I ain't got my book. You got the phone, the device where you can just simply tap it, take five minutes, read God's word. And then you go back to your Netflix, Amazon, eBay, iTunes, App Store, Facebook, all those other things. And young people today watching me, if you're watching me, please, please take time in God's word. It'll light up your life and help you a long way down the road. Please don't just uh, say, uh, what is a Bible app? Please don't nobody say that. If you're a young person and you're into that stuff and you're going fast on that phone, please don't say, I don't know what a Bible app is. But, uh, uh, but seriously, we need the word of God is so vital. We are constantly fighting temptations. And Jesus showed us in Matthew 4 how to deal with the devil, which is knowing and applying God's word in our day and time we have today. We need to know it. Moving on to my fourth and final key ingredient to fighting temptations. And that is watch and keep praying. Watch and keep praying. Mark 14, 37 and 38, the text says this. It says, and he cometh and findeth them sleeping and saith unto Peter, Simon sleepeth thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. 
So here's Jesus right here. He asked three of his disciples to stay there for a while while he went to go and pray. So after a little time of praying, Jesus got up, came back uh, uh, after praying and, 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 and from praying rather, went to check on these three disciples, found them knocked out fast asleep. And he said to Peter, he said, Simon, are you sleeping? Couldn't you watch and stay awake for me for just one hour, one hour? Now watch and pray. He tells him now watch and pray and stay awake and pray. So Jesus goes back. And so th that they aren't led into temptation is what Jesus is trying to say. And so that they aren't led into their own temptation. And he says the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our bodies are weak. He's talking about. Jesus really didn't uh, cor uh, corp corporate prayer at that time. He didn't really, he, he needed, excuse me, he needed to uh, incorporate prayer into his life because he knew what he was going to encounter. He knew that what he was about to see. And we, he knew the temptation was very close by, even though he was willing to do his father's will, the temptation was there because he's seen already. Instead of supporting Jesus, when we go back to these disciples by staying awake with him and praying even for themselves, for the strength they needed, that they were all going to need in the coming hours, they got comfortable and just simply falling asleep. Remember the, the video I showed with the gazelles uh, uh, got comfortable, start uh, a wrestling plan, whatever they were doing. And the enemy came in and devoured one. Well, that's the thing we got to do is be alert at all times. Be alert. You see, they got comfortable. They got comfortable. And sometimes we do that. But when we go back to the text here, Jesus may have told these three disciples to watch and pray because Jesus knew Peter very well. The things Peter did when Peter was boasting and just just now uh, he not even watching and praying, but sleeping and the upcoming denial of Jesus Christ is what Jesus needed prayer for. He needed his heavenly father to strengthen him. Jesus simply wanted his disciples to pray for strength, to be able to go through what was coming for him and for them as well. They were just about to see Jesus go through the worst abuse that anyone can ever imagine. What they were about to see is what he, he goes through is what they were going to see. Some of them, as, as we know, Jesus had already told them what they were going to do. So Jesus knows our spirit is willing, but our flesh can have tendency to be weak. Oh, but yet, yet and still, when we think about it, with the power of the Holy Spirit and God's word to help us in times of temptations, we will find ourselves effectively able to resist the devil's temptations. If we're in the word of God, if we know the word of God, and you read something like Jesus saying, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and you lock that and hide it in you, it comes to remembrance and know that even though you're going through something challenging, you know that God is with us. We know that God has us. Let's remember in Matthew 4, verse 2, Jesus was hungry after 40 days and 40 nights. That's when the tempter came in. Watch and keep praying. And when we think about it, the devil will come to us at our most vulnerable times to tempt us. And that's where we must refer to God's word and prayer. We must remember to watch and keep praying. Prayer is a very important ingredient in overcoming and fighting temptations. Prayer is power. It strengthens us because we're calling on God and his angels to come to our aid when we need him. And God says he's going to do it. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Said, so let's do it like this. Let's, we'll, let's do like Paul did. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, he said in three words, pray without ceasing. Three words, pray without ceasing. And Jesus did just that. He went and prayed a third time according to Mark 14, 41. Fighting temptations is not an easy thing. However, 
we can fight the temptations by remembering what Jesus has done for us. Jesus Christ never committed a sin. Jesus did what we could not do, all of us. He did it all for us, each and every one of us. Jesus Christ willingly endured being tortured on the cross just for you and I, while we were still sinners. Every sin that we have committed or will ever commit, he played a big part in nailing those sins uh, to, to the cross. Jesus took them all to the cross for us to stand in the gaps. Hear me, folks, listen. How we respond to Satan's temptation and his willing, uh, excuse me, and his alluring us into uh, all this stuff is a great indicator as to how much we really love Jesus Christ and how much he has in our hearts, how much he has uh, uh, our hearts rather. And if we love Jesus Christ, we will be able to do as, as, as God told us, as God gave us an example through Christ, which is to pray, refer to the word of God, hide the word in our hearts. Our loving and merciful, gracious God has already given us the power of the Holy Spirit and is being in us. He's dwelling with us. He's always with us. He gives us the tools necessary for victory. The one thing for sure is this. We do need to use our common sense and not place ourselves in situations that will open us up to stimulate all these weaknesses we have. If we're a former alcoholic, you don't need to be up in no bar figuring I'm going to go witness to folks. Wait for them to come out and talk to them. We are already smothered every day with images, messages, and anything in between that our adversary, the devil, places right there up in front of us to tempt us. We don't need to make things any more difficult than we already have them. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus said this, watch and pray that ye enter not into, uh, 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 into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Listen, folks, hear me. When we know that something is or it can be sinful, what we need to do is flee from it. Run for the hills. Run like Joseph did. Just run. Run like that, that guy on that show, uh, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, it's a, uh, 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 well, I forgot his name. But just run for the hills. We have to remember the devil is the master of rationalizing and manipulation and the father of lies. He will lie just like he did Eve back in chapter three of Genesis. He lied to her to get her to eat from that tree. As I said earlier, God gives us the spiritual weapons to fight the temptations that come our way. According to Ephesians 6 and 13, Paul says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Let me tell you something. We're engaged in a spiritual battle, folks. And we're all, we're all given God's armor. God's armor we're given. The belt, which is the truth. Satan uses lies and we need the truth of God. That belt, the breastplate of righteousness. Satan wants to attack that heart. The shoes ready to go tell others and continue sharing. Satan wants to lie to us and he wants us to feel that it's useless. Keep running and spreading the gospel. Uh, the shield, which is faith, to see beyond our circumstances and know that faith is keeping us. The helmet, uh, which means the salvation. Guard our mind to not doubt in God's word. The sword, God's word. Truth is God's word in his word is where we find the truth. It lights up the path, lights up our feet, lights up everything we need. No matter what, no matter what temptations or trials that may come our way, God's word and God's spirit are much more powerful than anything that Satan may throw at us. Know that for a fact. 
Listen, folks, please hear me. When we are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can look at the temptations that we're fighting as opportunities to use, excuse me, for opportunities for us to show others that God is indeed the master of our lives. See, God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to pay for our sin debt in full. God loved us so much that he lives, he, 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 he lives and gives us the comforter and the Holy Spirit who indwells us as well as empowers us to do his will. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for all his mercies. Thank you, Jesus, for willingly giving out your life for me so that we can have eternal life all because of Jesus' death. All because of Jesus, uh, 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 his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. This is why we can rely, re rely on the changing power of the Holy Spirit who empowers us even more in fighting the temptations that we deal with. So remember, when we think about it, remember the four key ingredients in fighting temptations that we are in, we're dealing with on a daily basis. We must understand our enemy is crafty. We must be disciplined and stay alert. We must know that the word of God is vital and we must watch and keep praying. This battle that God equips us, we can be victorious in living it. We may come short, but get back up, brush it off and keep pressing. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy saying, stay down there, give up but keep pressing toward that mark of the high calling. God bless you, God keep you. I truly love you all, I miss you. And there may be somebody watching online right now who has never accepted Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. God loves you regardless of what you've done. You don't focus on what's there, that's the enemy lying, but God stands with open arms, ready to receive you. He said that he gave his son so that we all could have eternal life. All of us, no matter what we've done. God is a loving, gracious, and merciful God. And he's waiting for you. Romans 10 says, for whosoever, that's you, calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's you, regardless, forget your past. But I tell you right now, you can receive Jesus right now, right there, right where you are, right there where you are. And I just wanna go over the plan of salvation or the sinner's prayer with you. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and to be the Lord of your life, and you wanna to go to glory, we can do that right now. We can go over the plan of salvation, the sinner's prayer. If you wanna do that, just bow your head and close your eyes with me right now and repeat these words after me. Just simply say, Lord God, I am a sinner. I am sorry for all my sins. I repent of my sins. Please have mercy on me, Lord, and save me. I believe that Jesus came, died, and rose again for my sins. I ask Jesus to come into my heart right now and be the Lord of my life. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right there, you are now a born again believer. You are now in the family of God. And there's more steps that you must do. There is something I've said in the past. There's nothing that's going to, no, uh, bombs and explosions going to go off, but God does, will do a supernatural thing in your life. If you trust him, you trust in his word, you start studying his word, you get you a good Bible and start reading it on a daily basis. As I said earlier, if you have one of the smartphones, you get that Bible app on there, version Bible app. Get that on there, start reading it when you don't have your Bible with you. And then also you surround yourself around good Christian folks, good Christian folks that's gonna encourage you. Get into a good Bible teaching church and God will do some great things in your area. If you're in the local area of Carson, California, we have room where the building is closed right now, but we will come back at some time. 
when the Lord says it's right. But if you need a good church, when we open, we have room for you. Just call that number on your screen right there. Leave your name and information and someone will get back with you. We want to just pray with you. We want to share the good word with you. We're praying for you. And I want to say congratulations and welcome into the family of God. I thank God for you. And I thank God for each and every one of you who watch us every week uh, as we bring the word of God in our online worship experience. I thank God for you. And I just want to say to you, we're praying for you. Stay strong. Stay in the word, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay prayed up. God bless you. God keep you. We love you. We miss you.